Hi everyone. So today we have a really interesting question where we're going to be talking about the Euler's torsion theorem and modular arithmetic. So these are probably two of the most fundamental concepts in number theory, but yet they are very interesting and you can see a lot of really nice problems being formed on the basis of just these elementary concepts. So yeah, let's see how this problem goes. This is a problem number 1 from the USA JMO in the year 2013 and this is a relatively famous problem I believe. And in this video we're going to be looking at the Euler's torsion theorem. Then of course a complementary discussion of the Euler's torsion function and the Fermat's little theorem. Then we're going to be talking about the modular arithmetic and of course we have book suggestions for national math olympiads and at the end a similar but challenging problem. This video is sponsored by chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads. physics olympiads computer science and informatics olympiads isi cmi entrances and research projects for school and college students okay so they're asking us this question are there integers a and b such that a is per 5 times b plus 3 and a times b is per 5 plus 3 are both perfect cubes so they effectively they're asking if they are simultaneously perfect cubes right can they ever be simultaneously perfect cubes for some particular integer a comma b and when i see this i first of all notice a couple of things what do you notice right so you first notice that a is per 5 times b times a times b is per 5 is actually ab whole is per 6 which in itself is a perfect cube right so that's probably something nice then you have certain symmetry involved over here as well so it's probably nice as well now they are asking what are they asking they are asking are there integers so that means that the answer is probably no because if the answer was yes then they would have typically said that find the number of integers or find all integers a comma b such that both of these things are simultaneously perfect cubes that would have been the wording of the question but since they are asking are there integers the answer is probably no right obviously by intuition right nothing else no, no formal no formal like working out server so maybe let's just uh, let's let's just try and see how this goes yeah so before starting maybe i think we can do a little bit of discussion on the euler's torsion theorem right so euler's torsion theorem This is probably like one of the first theorem that you come across when you study number theory, and it just states that a is per phi of n is congruent to one mod n, right? And this obviously holds true where the GCD of a comma n is one. So this is kind of like a prerequisite for that. And what's this phi of n? Well, this phi of n is nothing but what we call as the Euler's torsion function, right? or a torsion function and it can be it's essentially the uh, number of integers number of integers less than n that are co prime to n right number of integers less than n that are effectively co prime to n and actually if n is a prime the phi of a prime number is actually p minus 1 So this expression over here effectively reduces down to a to the power p minus one is congruent to one mod p, which is nothing but the staple for the Fermat's little theorem, which we call as FLT. So effectively, this Euler's torsion theorem is essentially a generalization of this Fermat's little theorem. But I can also say that the Fermat's little theorem is a special case, right? Special case of this Euler's torsion theorem where we are considering primes. So Euler's torsion theorem for primes is effectively Fermat's little theorem. But effectively, what you need to remember is a is per phi of n is congruent to one mod n, right? In general, and the GCD of a comma n is one. Okay, but all of that later, how can we how can we even be use this for a problem? Well, we can just see that a is per phi times b times a times b is per phi is equal to a b is per six, like I had kind of like shown you before, giving you the hint of that. So, well, if you actually notice, phi of nine is actually equal to six. How did I calculate that? Well, phi of three square. What will it be? It will be three square one minus one by three. Pretty standard calculations. Now this becomes nine times two by three. This becomes six, right? So phi of nine is six. So a b raised to the power phi of nine, or phi of nine, whatever you call it, 
is congruent to 1 mod 9 right but this is if and only if the gcd of ab comma 9 is 1 so for this to hold true we need to first prove that the gcd of ab comma 9 is 1 now if the gcd of ab comma 9 is 1 it follows from the fact that gcd of ab comma 3 should also be 1 or effectively we can say that if gcd of ab comma 3 is 1 then effectively should come from the fact that 3 does not divide a and 3 does not divide b so what am i trying to say over here i'm trying to say that if we somehow we prove this couple of things that 3 does not divide a and 3 does not divide b it necessarily implies that the gcd of ab comma 3 is 1 should write this like this probably and the gcd of ab comma 3 is 1 then that necessarily implies that the gcd of ab comma 9 is 1 so effectively if i just may prove that 3 does not divide a and 3 does not divide b this th this statement which says the gcd of ab comma 9 is 1 is actually true and if that statement is true then this this congruence expression that we've written for ab raised per phi of 9 is actually also true so maybe let's just try and maybe prove this in some manner i guess so well what do we have over here so let's suppose that both of them are perfect cubes right let's assume that both are perfect cubes so effectively a is per 5 times b plus 3 is equal to m cube and a times b is per 5 plus 3 is n cubed now by way of contradiction by way of contradiction let us assume that 3 divides a or 3 divides b so one of them let's just say divides a or let's one of them divides b so here we had that 3 does not divide a and does not divide b we need to prove that so we'll try and prove it by contradiction that either 3 divides a or 3 divides b and then maybe just prove that this this assumption that we have taken over here is incorrect so let me just see uh, what happens when 3 divides a so when 3 divides a then that essentially implies that 3 divides a is per 5 times b plus 3 because obviously that if 3 divides a then 3 divides this term as well and 3 divides 3 obviously so what is a is per 5 times b plus 3 which is m cube so 3 divides m cube and since 3 is a prime number it has no other factors other than the number itself and 1 that means that 3 also divides m but because 3 is prime we can also state that 3 cube divides m cube right so effectively it implies that 27 divides m cube and if you actually see the expression for m cube it was a is per 5 times b plus 3 so this is essentially divisible by 27 right so this is 0 mod 27 so this must also be 0 mod 27 which is absolutely nonsense right so can 3 ever be 0 mod 27 well that essentially would mean that 27 should divide 3 which is obviously untrue another way to kind of see this is that from this expression that we have over here 27 divides m cube right so 27 must also divide a raised per 5 times b because m cube can be written like this and a raised per 5 times b is nothing but m cube uh, minus a raised per 5 times b like if 27 is dividing these two quantities it must also divide their difference right and what is this thing this is nothing but 3 right from from here m cube minus a raised per 5 times b is nothing but 3 so basically 27 should divide 3 which never holds true right so therefore our assumption that 3 divides a is incorrect and similarly via symmetry i can also prove that 3 division the 3 divides b is also incorrect so both of these things that are taken over here 3 divides a or 3 divides b they are incorrect what does that mean that essentially implies that 3 does not divide a and 3 does not divide b and what's the consequence of that well to kind of like maybe go a little bit behind if we had proved like i was saying earlier if we kind of prove that 3 does not divide a and 3 does not divide b that implies that the gcd of a b comma 3 is 1 which then implies that the gcd of a b comma 9 is 1 so this essentially implies that the gcd of a b comma 9 is 
1. So AB raised to the power of phi of 9 should be congruent to 1 mod 9. In other words, AB raised to the power 6 will be congruent to 1 mod 9. And I think that's great. I can just maybe mark that as equation number 1. Okay, great. But beyond this, we just need to work with modular residues, basically. So we have a to the power 5 times b plus 3 is equal to m cubed. And similarly, a b to the power 5 plus 3 is equal to n cubed. And now it's good to see that 3 does not divide m as 3 does not divide a and 3 does not divide n as 3 does not divide b. So this essentially implies that m is not congruent to 0 mod 3 and similarly n is also not congruent to 0 mod 3 because they're not divisible by 3. Well, what does that mean? Maybe if I just convert this into mod 9 for both of them, so m comma n will not be congruent to 0 comma 3 comma 6 mod 9. So I just kind of transform this mod 3 to mod 9. What would happen if they are 0 comma 3 comma 6 mod 9? Well, then they would be 9k, 9k plus 3 or 9k plus 6 m comma n would be of this form right if they had been 0 comma 3 comma 6 mod 9 but then but then you see that 3 divides 9k 3 divides this expression as well and 3 divides the lower expression as well so 3 divides all of these three quantities but we've seen that 3 does not divide m and 3 does not divide n right so i think it's pretty clear now that m comma n cannot be 0 comma 3 comma 6 mod 9 so that implies that m comma n must be 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, or 8 mod 9. Now I can really reduce this down using the concept of negative remainders to 1, 2, 4, minus 1, minus 2, and minus 4 mod 9. So these are all the residues possible of m, n when we kind of divide it by 9, when you take mod 9. And now maybe if I check out the residues of m cubed and n cubed, I'll actually get only two terms, 1 and 8. I can check this out by cubing as well. So effectively, it implies that m cubed minus 3 and n cubed minus 3 can only be congruent to negative 2 comma 5 mod 9. So basically, these quantities m cubed minus 3 and n cubed minus 3 can only be congruent to 7 comma 5 mod 9. And when you multiply these two together, m cubed minus 3 times n cubed minus 3, they can only be congruent to 25, 49, or 35 mod 9. So it essentially implies that m cubed minus 3 times n cubed minus 3 can either be, what is 27? Well, 27 is 7 mod 9, 49 is 4 mod 9, and 35 is 8 mod 9. So it can either be 4, 7, 8 mod 9. But to kind of go back from a definition of these m cube and n cube, what was these terms, right? m cube was a times 5 to the power a to the power 5 times b plus 3, and n cube was a times b to the power 5 plus 3, right? So effectively, m cube minus 3 is a to the power 5 times b, and n cube minus 3 is a times b to the power 5. And if I just maybe like put this down into this equation number 2 that we have over here, I'll get a to the power 5 times b times a b to the power 5. That is congruent to 4, 7, 8 mod 9. So effectively, this then becomes AB whole to the power 6 is congruent to 4, 7, 8 mod 9. But from the Euler's Torsion theorem, we had seen that AB to the power 6 is congruent to 1 mod 9. So this is a contradiction. Right? Here we are getting 1 mod 9. And again, here we're getting 4, 7, 8 mod 9. So this is clearly a contradiction. But what are we contradicting over here? What are we contradicting over here? What's the assumption? The assumption, the assumption lies in the fact that we can write these two simultaneously as perfect cubes. So therefore, our assumption was incorrect. And what was the assumption? A raised to the power 5 times b plus 3 and a times b raised to the power 5 plus 3 cannot be simultaneously it cannot be simultaneously written as perfect cubes for any integer a comma b so yeah that sums up our problem and in the question that given us are there integers a comma b 
so you will say that no there are no integers a comma b right so there are no such integers a comma b no a comma b that just satisfies the condition that both of them can be simultaneously perfect cubes in short they can never be simultaneously perfect cubes so yeah, that was a really nice interesting demonstration of how we can actually use modular arithmetic to solve some really nice and elegant problems Okay, so after that we have some book sessions for National Math Olympiads, Elementary Number Theory by David Burton, Problem Solving Strategies by Arthur and Jell, Functional Equations by Venkata Chala, Problems in Plane Geometry by Sharigan, Elementary Number Theory by Sierpinski, Graph Theory by Harari, and of course Combinatics by Bruali. Great, so at the end we have a similar but charging problem, and you want to determine all pairs of integers m, n so that m squared plus n and n squared plus m are both perfect squares. So simultaneously here they're holding perfect square and there's really nice symmetry involved over here as well. So maybe give it a try and if you're able to solve it or make any progress on it, let me know in the comment section. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much and bye-bye. The programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit chinta.com.